Um, but Harvard was more a small company, and they they have they have like uh, 250 people were affected with this audit. So the, pretty much the same, you know. They 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 um, they told us what we can do, and then they hope that the eyes can treat them in the same way that they treat ABM, right? And then what we what that. What we did, what the unit did, was that instead to to you know to go public in this moment, excuse me, we uh, we went with a congressperson. We went to Keith Allison office. We went to the um, Betty McCollum office in in Minneapolis. We went to the uh, senator uh, Amy Klobuchar and Al Franken. And talk about this because you know, you know, a year later we saw a lot of publicity and I and say, Oh, we went just to the Bell Apple, the company who that are facing problems with the worker, you know, and then the company they own money, they don't file they that good you know documentation and blah blah blah. And then basically they say, Oh, we are focused in the bell apple and the good apple. Why I say this? Because worker you know, union workers in Minneapolis, they make uh, thirteen dollars the hour. You know, thirteen dollars with thirty cents per hour plus benefit. You know, health insurance was well, only you know thirty bucks for a single person. Vacation, sick day. You know, FMLA, disability pay. You know, when women get get the baby, they have disability pay by the union contract. That's a pretty good job. This job. You know, for immigrant. So, our argument with 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 the, with the, with the uh, in elected official was, you know, they are targeting union folks. You know, they are targeting union workers who really have benefit. You know, they make it good. You know, they pay taxes. They own houses. People with dreams, kids. You know, you know, and it's it's hard to say this, but um, people from. Uh, kids from uh, the ABM audit. Um, unfortunately, this this person was not able to come today. Her name is Brenda, Brenda Drada. She was in the in, you know, in the 11th grade where her mom got the letter. So you know what happened with her? She quit from the school. She quit from the school to help the mom to pay the bill. For the sister, so you know, and I and I, I spoke with her on Sunday and say, "Hey, Brenda, can you come with me?" And say, "You know, I feel I can. I have to be in my job." She worked from uh, from um, two p.m. until one, two a.m. in the morning. You know, kind of dangerous job. You know, in cheap. Doesn't have sick day insurance, nothing, and she make like you know eight dollars per hour. She said, you know, I cannot be off today for go to to you to the conference. You know, she's bilingual. She speak really good English, really good Spanish, and so you know, I you know we try to advise her and help her. You need to go back to the school and get your dreams, and you know. We and we ask ourselves, what is the American dream for for this kid? To one for other person, one for other student in the same situation. So, you know, back to the harbor. Um, you know, we are in the, in the we were in limbo about this if ICE will approve for 90 days or not. So, and. We say in December of 2010, we got the news that um, Chipotle, that you know, one of the the big uh, Mexican chain in the United States with thousand store, you know, you can find a restaurant in every city of this country. They start to fire people. You know, the same. You know, in the 
the governor was kind of uh, bad because they don't tell them what what happened. So that you know that Chipotle case, you know, Tanya went up. You know, she's gonna talk about about that. You know, they're gonna preserve this. But so for us, you know, we feel that working in Chipotle, you know, they don't have the same benefit that our members have, but but was attacked to us because in you know, and we can say in 15 months, almost 2,000 persons, 2,000 real people losing the job, go to the underground economy. You know, people who were making $13 an hour went to the agencies, 10 agencies to make $8. So they, they you know, we're talking for, like I say, um, Jude people, we know hope. But uh, when we were in the Chipotle situation back in December 2010, we have a, a, a call from uh, Jeffrey K. Sorry. I have a call from Jeffrey K. He's a journalist, he's a fr freelance, and he's an author too. You know, he wrote a book, and he's really in deep about the immigration issue, and not only here but you know in the whole world. And then he called us to a project to start to to go back, you know, a year. And then, you know, where are these people, right? Where are the 1,256 people who were affected by, by I-9? And we told, them, we told him, you know, Jeffrey, yeah, you can come to, the, to the Minnesota and Minneapolis. You can, you know, we can help you to find these people again and see, you know, what they are. If they, they are surviving, what they're doing, or they went back to Mexico, or, or you know another country, or they move. So we decided to pass a survey to to this worker, and he was able to interview this lady Brenda, um, and then another worker, and then um, basically he find out that people make forty less percent less of the salary that they used to make before with ABM. You know, forty percent less income to them. You know, we found people that that are uh, working with the under the minimum wage for this. You no, know, we found people that they just like I said, you know, forty percent less of the income. People, a lot of people lose their home for this. And, you know, they're still there. They decide to stick around. So, if you have time, you can go to this uh, article on the website, Immigration Policy Center. And then Jeffrey K., he's the person who wrote this article, Deeper into the Channel. Small information on over there about what I'm talking about, ABM, and then you know, and other companies in the country. So in some cases they profit from immigrants because Chipotle in one case, you know, ABM was a union company, Harvard was a union company. But you know, many, but maybe two or three from thousand companies. They were audited by ICE, and these people don't have any voice. They just, the company, they just put this worker in the trash. So, um, back with Harvard, you know, people were fired 
and the, the, the last pool of work that were fired in March 31st. So we, we were talking about 240 workers that were fired. I know that. And one of, one, of the, one of the newer workers that she was ready to come today was Lucero. And um, she's a single mother of two kids. Both kids both born in this country. Um, and Ayeli has, she's almost 15 years old. She wanna be, you know, police officer. But uh, with this situation that she is thinking to, to join the war force. She's planning to quit from the school and start to work and support her, her little brother and her mom. So I, I'm wondering that if this is the, 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 the new, new uh, policy for the government, send our immigrant kid to work, be the new slave in this country? No, well, they can be the child slave for, for the next, you know, five, ten years. This is the quality of, you know, of the American dream that we create right now with a new desktop rate. So, you know, you know, the SEAU 26 is the, is the, uh, the few locals and the few unions in the whole United States that we really disagree with, that, with this and then we often, you know, criticize the administration because they really hurt real people, immigrants. They don't hurt and they don't make anything wrong in this country. Just only came to war and crossed the border because thanks to the free train and, and all the U.S. policy in South America, people have to come to this country and emigrate. So it's not another um, solution.